He said, no, some people are born to be slaves and some other people are born to rule over them. And the reason that you and I know different and it's not because we're smarter than Aristotle, he was a smart man. But we have something he didn't have, we have the Bible. And so, therefore, that's where we get these ideas and, and from pagan antiquity or neo-paganism or all the modernisms, you, you get the opposite. After studying this topic for the last two years and reading literally hundreds of their books and articles and speeches, I've come to the conclusion, whether the left knows it or not, their plans and goals can all be summed up very simply. They are at war with God. A people that are moral and believe their rights come from God would not only never want what they're selling, but would also never need it. And they know that. It's obvious if you're trying to trying to subvert a country, you want to control the news. You want to control public opinion. And a lot of people realize, well, there's a biased media, and most people know that. Even the Washington Post admitted it. Yeah, we were biased for Obama. So what? And when you enter into the equation, so what? That means the biases, the opinions of the reporters, enter into what is news. They decide whether you have a right to know. And it's no longer a bias. They turn from just, from just political bias to activism. They go to the places that influence, or I should say, where they can have leverage. Generations of journalists have been trained to interpret events, interpret the news. Not report the facts, interpret the news. They do not deal in facts because facts aren't effective for them. They have very few facts on their side. They've gone into and penetrated these major areas to where they can influence it in the direction they want to go. We've seen a massive shift away from old-fashioned objective news reporting to what he called interpretive reporting, what others call advocacy journalism. And it's advocacy for a cause. And as a result, we have a news media in the United States that is extremely liberal at the present time. Which was a, a major, major goal control not merely the newsprint but the television media and and Hollywood Stalin said himself if I could control Hollywood I could rule the world children are always the first targets of anybody trying to bring down a system John Dewey is believed to be the most influential man in the whole area of public education. He uh, went to Russia in 1928 to help stay the Karl Marx way of education, bring it back to America. Dewey was a, an atheist. He was a, a socialist, a humanist. He was part of the Socialist Society in America, helped found that. What he believed in was that education should socialize the child to make him uh, a, a willing tool of the state. It might be surprising to some that the man who is still idolized as the father of public education in America is the very man who did everything in his power to dumb down our children so that they would willingly accept his vision of a socialist America. It started with Dewey in the early 1900s. It expanded um, really expanded since the 1960s. The hard left gets control of the teachers unions and the training colleges. If you've got those two institutions, you can pretty much dictate all educational policy. The people who were uh, demonstrating against our country and against our government in the 1960s have now become tenured professors in the universities. So they're the ones who are writing the textbooks, uh, teaching the teachers, uh, running the teachers' colleges. 
and it's self-perpetuating because once you have the universities, then you train more cadres and more and more and more. And they discovered that they could uh, do more to remake our country by going into the schools uh, than they could by throwing bombs. I believe the average patriotic American underestimates the importance and influence education has on their children. That's how the large majority we had in 1980 to elect Ronald Reagan in a landslide has been lost. It's not because the other side has had lots of children. No, they're boarding theirs. But instead they're capturing ours through the propaganda they teach them seven hours a day for 13 years and even longer if they attend college. We are losing most of our children to the other side because of the anti-American, anti-God, and anti-free enterprise rhetoric they are filled with in the government schools. Government schools are not teaching basic reasoning processes. They're not teaching logic. They're not teaching actual data of history and science and mathematics. And if your education is rather limited, then you're inclined to believe that government can be the solution to your problems. When you look at the desks in the schoolroom, you'll find four together, or maybe a table, they sit around a table. Independent desks are very rare in most classrooms because they don't want to promote the self-sufficiency, independence mindset. You go back to William Z. Foster in his book, Toward Soviet America, you will see how uh, he has whole chapter there on how we have to supplant education in this country and ultimately force every student to attend public school. That's the other thing. I hope the homeschoolers get, catch on to this. The homeschoolers and the Christian day school movement are going to have some very rough times ahead of them because the public school crowd it cannot afford to have any competition. And they're, having, and they're being given plenty of competition by the homeschoolers right now. You see the effects of that lowered educational standards. There's no more studying of the classics or studying of the civics or you know, how the US Constitution was formed. It's, it's all progressive education. It's all based on the identity politics, the isms, the current trend, the isms, environmentalism, racism. They're training them for the collective and a collective mindset and a dependency mindset. And it seems that they, again, want to have people be uneducated, so then they do become wards of the state. They're dependent on the government to provide everything for them. It's under 10% of kids believe that, that there is an absolute right and an absolute wrong. And how, why are we surprised? We've sent our kids into this government system that indoctrinates them, that teaches them about tolerance and diversity and multiculturalism and not about reading, writing, and arithmetic, not about what our founding fathers had to say. It's, it's consequences. Few would argue that the education the children are receiving in the public schools is pathetic at best. But with the amount of tax dollars we spend each year, over twice as much as it would cost to send the students to private school, why do we allow this to continue? The group that my investigation led me to that seems dedicated to making sure the children don't get a good education was a real shocker. Uh, the uh, schools are, are pretty much controlled by the teachers union, the National Education Association. If you look at their platform and goals, uh, you would think they were a socialist or almost communist.